Hi, my name is Hilayun. I'm a 25 years old um, Afghan activist and peace builder from Afghanistan, and I'm currently based in United Kingdom. Um, so just to tell you about my journey, um, I started working in peace building and humanitarian sector um, when I was quite young because uh, I used to travel with my mom a lot and she she she's an activist and uh, um, she used to work with UNAMA back then. Um, and she used to work a lot on um, providing empowering uh, resources and workshop to uh, women in Eastern Zone, specifically Nengar, Harlagman and Kunar provinces. And I used to tag along a lot and just to witness my mom work um, firsthand, that was the first inspiration for me and how a woman can actually make changes in, um, in the lives of so many people. Um, and that was post 9-11. That's when we um, think Afghanistan was witnessing a lot of changes. And um, after the Taliban regime, when after U.S. came, um, so there was a lot of presence of humanitarian NGOs, especially the U.N. in Afghanistan. And when I used to go to with my mom um, and witness what she was doing, kind of give me inspiration on how I can support people uh, in my own country, especially young women, because I used to talk a lot with young women my age uh, in Eastern Zone and how they were feeling war and how they witness war and how they can provide different recommendations. Um, and the second reason why I started working in in sector of peace building is because my mom and my dad, they witnessed war, they lived through, war, uh, through the civil war in Afghanistan. Um, when, when civil war was happening in Afghanistan in the 80s and the 90s, my mother was shot two times um, along with my uncle. And they were the only family who were left in that specific area where war was happening. And my mother was losing a lot of blood. My uncle was also losing a lot of blood. And um, that's when my grandpa gra grandparents found a doctor in order to save their lives. And fortunately, they've lived. Um, and my dad also, when he was young during civil war, um, he couldn't even find my grandpa, my grandpa um, dead body because the body was lost due to war. And my, when my whenever my parents used to talk about me, the effects of war and how war was never a solution for Afghanistan. This is what also what made me push into work in, in the sector of peace building, um, because Personally, I believe in the work that I have done so far that in Afghanistan to make sustainable peace, um, war should never be an option. And in order to actually work on peace building, we need to work with all the different stakeholders. So that's why when I started my organization called Afghan Youth Ambassador for Peace Organization, um, it's a grassroots civil society. So we're a very local organization. We are only based in the Eastern Zones and focusing on the Eastern Zone. Why I started working in the Eastern Zone because I'm from that province and we wanted to make changes in a small community first in order to like expand to different countries, do one thing better in order um, in order to expand it to different provinces. So I and along with my classmate and different young people from different zone in Eastern Zone, uh, we started this organization and we started advocating for peace building and we started advocating for girls education from Islamic perspective in the Eastern Zone. So we started working with religious leaders, tribal leaders, we conducted community peace building dialogues uh, in Eastern Zone because Afghanistan is quite tribal and religious country. And in order to work, we need to make sure we respect and work with all different stakeholders. We know we have difference of opinion, but we need to work we need to pave ways for dialogues in order to make any changes in the country and that's my journey why i started working in the sector of peace building because uh, well i was traveling to eastern zone um i witnessed a lot of young women who were deprived from education especially my age because i had the privilege to continue my education to continue higher education because i had the supporting family um, and I had these privileges that I have right now, and I want to use these privileges to provide resources and support to to the Afghan girls who are my age, uh, who are deprived from education in my country. Um, and this is this is why I still continue what I'm doing at the moment. Um, working in the peace in the peace sectors and i have worked in the in the in the sector of peace building for almost 5 years i work with different humanitarian organizations including oxfam amnesty international and irc at the moment 
Um, and throughout this, uh, throughout my journey, I learned a lot about how to prioritize different projects, how to prioritize my mental health and how to prioritize the work that I'm doing in Afghanistan, but also the work that I'm doing here, supporting refugees in the UK. Um, and one thing I learned throughout my journey that when I started organi my organization, I was quite young and over ambitious. Um, I also didn't know well about my community and I started working on preventing violent extremism, which was quite a heavy topic to begin with in order to make any changes in the country. Um, and this led me to learn a lot about my own community, uh, especially while working with grassroots leaders, because I learned that those who are living in that community, they know better than me. And that's why um, I started to play the role of facilitator and provide all the necessary resources um, and support that these leaders need on the ground. For example, when we conducted the first community peace building dialogue, we trained more than 25 to 30 people in Afghanistan, including young women. Uh, on effective leadership, on communication, on how to conduct community peace building dialogues. And after these trainings that we've provided, we let we told them like, okay, you are the leaders in your community and you need to pick up pick a topic, which is um, one of the issues in your communities. And they picked up um, the issue of early forced child marriage in their community in the Eastern zone, for example, in Ningarhar province. And we provided them all the facilities, all the resources in order to uh, conduct a community dialogue with religious leaders, tribal leaders in their community. And throughout my journey, what I've learned is that it's better to give power to people who are in Afghanistan right now to make changes um, in their country because the changes needs to come within the people and this is in, in in the key resources and the key thing that we need to do at the moment is to provide access to education. And this is something that I've been doing and I've learned throughout my journey that education is the, the most key and important thing we can provide to any um, community members in order to make changes in their community. And right now... Um, in the UK, I, I am working with IRC, but I'm running my NGOs remotely and most of our members uh, are based in Afghanistan. They're working um, tirelessly in order to provide humanitarian support to people who are in need and in Eastern zones, but all over Afghanistan as well. Um, and it's, it's difficult at the moment because sometimes working in Afghanistan and working in the field of humanitarian sector, it's, it gets quite overwhelming because everything is politically polarized. Sometimes you get support, sometimes you don't get support. And I think throughout my journey, one thing is that I've learned and, and I, I'm still sticking by it is like as long as you know the work that you've been doing is making an impact in the people lives in, on the, in Afghanistan, um, you should continue working that And any small privileges that you have, um, you should share it with others who don't have access to these resources. And that's why the work that I'm doing in a, a right now is still continued. And I'm hoping to continue working in Afghanistan, especially in the field of peace building and localizing the humanitarian aid on the ground. I think my passion, um, I think when I was working with my mom, um, when after every project she completed, like, I could see the changes in people's life, even if it was like a small change in their community. Um, it was still, it was a moment where you realize like, okay, with all things that you have, even if it's like small resources that you have, and if you can share it with other people, you can make so many changes, even if it's small changes, it still counts. And I think that was the first time I started have developed passion for um, humanitarian sector and for the work that I'm doing. But also to point out that in Afghanistan, working in the field of humanitarian sector and activism, it's not always a choice. It's also out of necessity because we owe this to our country, especially the young people, because the, the young generation or the educated generation in Afghanistan, and we were the one who had the privileges to study in higher education, continue our higher education and continue studying in prestigious universities abroad. And we've worked with so many humanitarian organizations. And I think all these resources and all this investment that has been done um, on us um, through, uh, by our families, by our community members, um, I think this is something that we owe back to our countries as well, especially the people who don't have access to these resources, especially Afghan women at the moment. It's been more than two years that the Taliban completely banned education um, towards Afghan women and and even not education, but also they don't have access to um, jobs anymore. They don't have any political um, um, seating um, in the government at the moment because um, and they don't even have access to their Islamic rights anymore because Islam says that education is both uh, compulsory both for women and men. And it's almost been two years that education is completely 
ban and realizing this kind of makes you still work harder for your people especially for afghan women on the ground um and it's it's really important that we realize how severe the situation is in my country like that's why when we having these interviews and if i'm going to different panels i try as best as best as i can to raise awareness because it's going to not just affect afghanistan the the current educational ban it's going to affect the regional countries as well but also we're not even realizing the the electricity gap that already existed in afghanistan and how it's going to affect the next generation in afghanistan and how the country is not going to prosper it's not going to go into um any it's not going to have any better future if half of your community is completely disabled uh, and they don't have access to um education so that's why witnessing the current situation that i have in my country i still have this passion to continue working in the field of humanitarian sector um but also one thing is that mental health is really important as well and throughout my, my journey i also realized that having um proper mental health support and working in the field of humanitarian sector is quite important in order to continue the passion that you have um working in this field because um like i said sometimes it, it gets quite overwhelming working in the field of humanitarian sector and things that are closer to um your home because obviously even our generation have not even processed what happened in afghanistan over the last two uh, years because we didn't know that the country is going to collapse we didn't know that our generation is going to be handed over without us being really involved in any decision making processes so that's why working in the passion that i have for humanitarian sector and working in the peace building it's still i, I there's a lot of reason why i'm still working in this um um in this field and i still continue working on my passion um and these are the reason why i still want to continue working and working for my community and for the people of afghanistan I think for anyone who wants to support not just my work but in general all um the Afghan uh, educator and activists who are doing the work on the ground um I think the first thing is to know what's going on in Afghanistan that's the first thing like have your knowledge um about what's happening in the country and then focus on one cause if you're supporting humanitarian aid on the ground in Afghanistan focus on that if you're working on the peace building focus on that sometime what we do whenever like people ask us like okay how can we support you and obviously there are so many issues and there's so much support that we need on so many issues but like on an individual basis if someone wants to support us is to have awareness about what's happening in Afghanistan secondly reach out to people who are working in the field of humanitarian sector specifically people who are still in afghanistan um uh, because they they face what's happening in afghanistan right now they're witnessing everything that happening in afghanistan but the other important thing is that they have connection with the community leaders with the activists and the, in the community especially grassroots um leaders which is quite important that if anyone wants to support our work reach out to grassroots organization who are working in afghanistan who are working in the sector of peace building and humanitarian sector once you reach out to us try to have more communication with us on what's happening in afghanistan we can provide you different resources and how you can contribute to that how can you support to that um share what's happening in afghanistan through different channels um raise awareness about the situation of afghan women in afghanistan right now um provide educational opportunities for afghan women because they don't have access to education and we cannot just wait and sit until the government changes their mind because it's almost been 2 years and we need to provide alternative educational opportunities for the women of afghanistan and for afghan girls um if you are abroad if you have access to scholarship and if you know you have access to scholarship this this is also towards um academia as well because um a lot of university professor or universities in general for example in the uk should allocate specific scholarship for women in afghanistan but also pro- support their visa facilitation because often right now um there are a lot of people and a lot of government and ngos who are providing educational opportunities for afghan girls but when it comes to visa they don't have they they cannot even get visa because they discriminate these women 
who cannot have access to visa and they cannot come to these countries and continue their education. There are also online opportunities and all, online educational resources um, that and you, uh, that people who have access to these education resources can provide these um, to Afghan girls on the ground. But also, most importantly, please provide support um, grassroots organizations who are actually providing educational resources and educational underground schools in Afghanistan right now because it needs money, it needs funds. So the United Nations, um, INGOs, and then the regional governments and anyone who have the capacity on an individual basis, um, support these organizations, donate as much as you can um, and provide access to education. But also if you have even have five, 10 minutes on one hour available in your day, you can uh, volunteer with different organizations, with different NGOs who are working on the ground. For example, we have an we have a call for open volunteers that can provide, for example, if there, if you are teachers in if there are teachers in the UK or the United States, if you have even one hour available in your day and you can provide that one hour, allocate that one hour to teach Afghan girls online, um, that would be a huge help. And if you reach to different organizations who are working in Afghanistan, they can provide you everything and how you can support us. But in order to support us, you need to know what's happening in Afghanistan. And I think that's the first step.